Hello and welcome to Chaotic Crochet Chatter with Stitchcraft Gifts. My name is Jenny. I am a visually impaired crocheter based in North Yorkshire in the UK, where I live with my husband and my son and our cat, and where I spend my days making pretty things. This is my little corner of the internet where I tell you all about the things that I have been making in the past couple of weeks and what I've got planned for the next couple of weeks. So, I hope you enjoy, get yourself comfortable, and we'll get on. Hello, it is Wednesday the 8th of May. It's about half past ten in the morning. And I'm alright, how are you? How are you getting on? I'm hoping that you are one of the apparently quite rare people who does not like it when spring comes. <laughs> I am hearing so many people at the moment celebrating the fact that the weather is warmer and brighter and that the evenings aren't as dark and I'm sat here going, no, no, I hate it. <laughs> so, you know, a little bit of solidarity and validation would be greatly appreciated if you feel the same as I do. Um, I will try not to complain too much as the weeks go on, but we are firmly into the bad half of the year for me. Um, my eyes don't like the light. I don't like the heat. Hay fever is a big problem. I probably should have had an antihistamine before starting this, but never mind. I shall press on and see what happens. Um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit crap. <laughs> so how do you feel about it? Let me know. If you are one of those mysterious people who loves spring and summer, then let me know. And I'm very, very happy for you. I really am. If you're a winter baby like me, just say hello. Make me feel better. <laughs> Um, oh, what have I done with my notes? I've covered them up. That's foolish. <clears throat> so, like last time, I'm going to start with chatter, I think. As always, um, I will be using chapters, so if you're not interested in the chattery life updatey bit, you can skip ahead very, very easily, either using the progress bar along the bottom of the video or in the description down below. How that said, don't skip this one. <laughs> because I'm going to be talking about a giveaway. A little bit, anyway. Well, no, actually, you can skip it. But yeah, I've got a couple of things to tell you that are, I think, very interesting. <laughs> Um, first off, I am taking part currently in the Amigurume hashtag on Instagram, having a lot of fun with it. You may already have noticed that I'm not a big Amigurumi maker, they're not my my go-to kind of project. That said, I do make them, you know, I quite like making them as gifts for people. Um, you'll have seen that I made Pikachu for Ned recently for his birthday and I made another one, a little um, beagle puppy for my friend. So you know, I do, I do make Amigurumi, but just not all the time. Um, but yeah, I'm having fun. It's nice to have prompts for <laughs> content for social media. Uh, it's making it a bit easier to figure out what to post and how to post it and all that sort of thing. Um, I need to record something for today's, actually, I need to do that after I've done this. Uh, yeah, and it's just nice, actually, to look back through the amigurumi that I have made. And there's more than I thought. <laughs> and most of them aren't in the house, I think that's why I forget about them, because I do gift them. So most have been given away to other people, friends and family and what have you. Um, but yeah, I've made quite a lot in my town, in my time. So if you're interested in that at all, then head on over to my Instagram page, feed, 
whatever we call it on Instagram, I've got no idea. <laughs> and you can have a look there. Please do um, follow me on there if you are interested in seeing more of my content. Um, the second thing to tell you about, I was going to leave this to incoming, but they're not here yet, so it's not incoming. <laughs> I have bought, paid for, no, I've paid in full for one, I'm paying in instalments for the other, my advent calendars for this year. Now I'm sure, well, you might be one of the people who's thinking, how are you thinking about advent already? It's May, <laughs> and it was in fact April when I ordered them. Um, independent yarn dyers, they need a lot of time to dye up all the yarn for the advent calendars. So they release their um, like colour palettes and, and mood boards and stuff at this kind of time in the year and put the advents up for pre-order so that they know how many they're going to be making for later in the year. Some will sometimes do a second run later in the year. I've got one I've got my eye on just in case. Um, I don't, really don't need a third one. <laughs> I probably can't afford a third one, but hey, never mind. Um, yeah, I had two last year and it was it was great. Uh, I've been a lot more selective this year about what to order. I've been very careful about looking at the mood boards and the inspiration behind them and hopefully have chosen ones where the colours will be my kind of colours, ones that I will want to use and... and that sort of thing. The ones last year, the yarn's lovely, the yarn is beautiful, it's all very, mostly very pastel -y and bright. pastel -y or bright, light, bright colours, and that's not really me. I do like a lot of colour, but if I'm going to use the yarn to make something for myself, then deeper, darker, richer colours are more my kind of thing. So, the ones I've ordered, the two that I've ordered are from, they're probably both sold out, but by all means go and check, they may not be, um, Blue Fern Yarns, the, I'll try and find pictures of the mood boards and pop them up for you while I'm chatting, so you can see what I am hopefully going to be working with. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, it's not the exact colours, but it's where the inspiration will come from, and, and um, will influence the colours of the final product. Yes, Blue Fern Yarns. The theme this year for theirs is Apothecary. The mood board was stunning. And I've managed to um, order... My words aren't coming today, are they? I have managed to order it on a yak base, which will make the colours even richer and deeper and a bit moody maybe. So really excited about that one. And then the second is by Giddy Yarns. She announced hers a few weeks ago before, announced the inspiration a few weeks ago before it actually all went live. And as soon as I heard what the inspiration was gonna be, I was like, please, please, please let the colors be good because I want it. She's using the Hogfather by Terry Pratchett as the inspiration for her mood boards for the colours and it's just it's great I love Terry Pratchett I love Hog I love the Hogfather Death is my favourite disc world disc world character <laughs> hands down no contest um and you know it's Christmassy obviously that time of the year so yeah I'm really excited and again the mood board is just beautiful so that will just be on a standard, um, I think it's just a standard sock base. So merino and nylon, I think. So it will be, I think actually, you'll be able to see now. I won't see until I get the pictures later. Um, but from memory, I think actually the colour schemes are quite similar between the two that I've chosen. But the different bases will mean that tonally they're hopefully quite different. So that's cool. 
third thing I want to tell you about, just realised I needed to, or I meant to, look something up before I started talking about it, so I'm going to have to do it now instead. My podcast birthday, the first one, is rapidly approaching. I'm just going to f- see if I can find when I released my first ever episode. Um, da, 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 da. Where is it? Oh, no, that's the video, not the playlist. That's not going to help me. No, that's not going to help me either. Stop. Go away. Sorry. Entertain yourself. <laughs> um, where, 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 where are my playlists? Playlists. There we go. Chaotic crochet chatter. So, the very first one... Well, that's episode two, so it would have been before that. Episode two was on the 17th of July, 2023. So I'm gonna, I'll have to look up the exact date. But my first episode would have been around about the first, well, the beginning of July, anyway, 2023. So beginning of the July 2024 marks one year of doing this podcast which is a bit mad it's a bit mad that I've been doing it for a whole year I don't know what episode number that will be at the moment um especially because of things that are happening over the next couple of months it might all be a bit up in the air but plans for podcast birthday episode (laughs) which you know date to be confirmed thinking of doing a Q&A session thing, either separately or as part of the main podcast episode, depending on how many questions I get. So if there's anything at all that you would like to ask me, pop it in the comments or drop me an email or send a carrier pigeon. (laughs) Um, And yeah, ask away and I will do my best to answer. It does not have to be related to crochet or crafting or anything. You can ask me whatever you like. Please do keep it clean. (laughs) And obviously if it gets too personal, then I may choose not to answer. But yeah, ask away. Do you want to know? I don't know. What might you want to know? I can't even think of anything. I'm terrible at this sort of thing. (laughs) Um, Maybe you want to know... Oh, I don't know how long I've been living in the UK, or, I mean, some of you will know that already, but (laughs) it's not a difficult question. Or you might want to know what my hobbies are other than crochet and crafting. Another easy question. The answer is very simple, but I won't answer it now. Yeah, whatever you want to know, drop it in the comments, send me an email, contact me however you feel is best. And if I don't respond to you, give me a poke. Sometimes I miss notifications. Um, and yeah, any questions that I get, I will pop them all on a list. And when we get to the podcast birthday episode, should be in the beginning of July, I'll answer them all. The other thing I want to do to celebrate is to organise a giveaway. I already have one very good prize. So... It will be, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it yet, I need to have a proper think, but it will be very easy giveaway to enter. Sorry, I've just realised I've got the window open because it's warm in here. So if you can hear strange noises, (laughs) that's probably why. There's a particularly noisy bird outside at the moment, (laughs) that's what reminded me. Um, So yeah, sorry if that's distracting, but uh, I need to cool down. Um, yes, giveaway. I have one prize already, which is really, really good. I will put together a couple more, I think. Entry will, of course, be free and will be nice and simple. It'll be something like comment on the post, use a certain word. Yeah, one of those. Um, on the video, not the post. You know what I mean. So, yeah, that should be exciting. I'm hoping to get 
at least two or three prizes together so that I can have more than one winner. If you are a crafty type person or not, and you just have things kicking around that you think would be useful, if you'd like to donate a prize, please don't feel like you have to at all. This is not, you know, I'm not sending out a plea or anything, but if you'd like to donate a prize, then just let me know and we can sort something out. That would be amazing. That's it, I think, for Chatter. Exciting times. <laughs> so, I suppose we should probably move on and actually talk about some crochet related content. It's what you're here for, really, isn't it? So, I'm going to first of all talk about my finished objects. Before I do that, I'm going to have a quick drink. Okay, finished objects. You may remember that last time I spoke to you, one of my works in progress was a moonlit shawl by Sandra Paul of Cherry Heart Designs. It's finished. <laughs> so this one, in fact, I finished this one and I finished two more. Just literally last night, finished the third one. So this is the first one, which you'll have sort of seen before. yellows and oranges. I really love how nicely these work up. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple, basically. Nice simple pattern, but still interesting. Yeah, it's not a boring pattern at all. Works up really nicely. This is the fingering weight version, four ply yarn. Um, the pattern is written as two two versions. There's the option for the four ply yarn or for DK. And if you follow the instructions in the pattern for the corresponding kind of yarn, whether you make a four ply or a DK, you'll end up with the same size shawl, which is very cool. Um, it's a crescent shaped shawl. I don't know if I can get it all in. No, I can't, but you can get a vague idea of the shape if I do that. Not that, because I dropped it. If I do this, <laughs> there we go. So it's thinner at each end. It's quite a shallow shawl. It's not very deep. I would really call it a scarf, but that's me. Um, yeah, it's a lovely shape. It's blocked out really well. This yarn is, um, I don't know the colour way, because it was from my stash, and I believe it's the Hobby Cotton King's Twirls, I think, which is now called um, Sultan Deluxe. They rebranded it a couple of years ago now. It's a really lovely yarn to use, at least I enjoy it. Some people don't because it's not twisted. The strands are all kept separate. And so it does split quite a bit when you're working with it. Um, but if you're careful, it's fine. And I just love the end result. And it's so light and drapey. And I don't mean the fact that it's a gradient yarn. <laughs> Obviously speaks to me anyway. Um, I'm just going to adjust the camera angle a moment. Hang on. There we go. That's better. Just realised I'm actually quite... I was quite low down in shot. Should have noticed that earlier. But yes, really lovely yarn to work with. And that was number one. Here is number two. <laughs> this one isn't, I thought it was completely finished. It's not quite finished. I need to weave in the ends. Um, and it needs blocking. But otherwise it's all done. Very, very different colors. This is definitely Cotton King's Twirls from Hobby. Um, I do have the colorway number somewhere. Hold on, I shall find it. This is approximately half a cake of the Cotton King's yarn, of the twirls. So you've got the first half of the gradient from this really light, almost, almost white, to this like 
um, pale bluey purple in the border. Let me find the colourway number before I show you the third one. It should be in this bag. Hopefully, this is another bag by Crafty Clay. Oh, it's the same one I showed you last time, isn't it? Mm. Lovely Jeanette at Crafty Clegg. She makes lovely bags. Her fabric choices are always amazing. Uh, da, 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 yarn, yarn, yarn. Colour number 10. I think the colourways are all the same. They've you know, renamed the, the range to Sultan Deluxe, but I think the colourways are all the same. Numbers are all the same. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's the, the first one out of that cake. Shawl number two, first one out of the colourway 10. Really, really like it. Not a colour that I would wear, it's too pale, but it's so pretty. So I just need to weave the ends in on that and then get it blocked, which is on my list to do today. Let's see whether I get it done. I need to really, because it's supposed to be going to the market that's this weekend, uh, which I will talk more about later on. And then shawl number three, which uses the other half of that cake, the darker half of the gradient, this I would wear. Look at the colours in that. Isn't that beautiful? And this one needs blocking too, but otherwise it's all done. The ends are woven in. It's darker and darker as we get towards this end. Everything's looking just a little bit pale on my screen. I'm hoping when it comes to editing, I'll discover that actually it's okay. But it's possible that everything is just slightly darker in real life and it's showing up for you. Just don't you love these colours? Gorgeous. The last couple of rows are from another bit of um, miscellaneous yarn from my stash. It's still it's the same yarn, different colourway. I don't know which colourway that's from. But I just didn't have quite enough in the cake to do two full shawls. So I've had to use a bit of something different for the edge. But I think it's worked out well. So that's that. And that is everything I've got finished since the last time I spoke to you. Um, I've had a lot of fun working these out, but like I said, it's a lovely pattern. Works up really quickly. Um, what have I done with that bag? So I can tell you how long it took to do the first one anyway. I didn't time the second two because there's just no need to film, to time it every time. Um, but the first one, bear in mind, I was new to the pattern, I was checking it all the time. So the other two were probably quicker. Um, but the first one I did took just over 10 hours, which sounds like a lot, but it's not. You know, if I'd pushed myself, I could have done that in two days. I think I took three or four um, and have done for the subsequent ones, but that's because I tend to just work on something for an hour or two each each time. So um, yeah, so quite quick, quite simple, beautiful result would highly recommend that pattern. I shall of course link the projects in the description. If you click on the project link it will then take you off and you'll be able to see the pattern details and the yarn and all that jazz. And that's it for finished objects. So let's move on to works in progress. What am I going to tell you about first? Let's do a quick spinning update. If you've been watching my daily crafty chat videos, you'll have seen, well, you'll have seen everything I'm talking about, but <laughs> you will have seen that um, I finished spinning the Shetland wool. I would show you it, but it's somewhere else in the room and I'm not sure where. <laughs> I've put it away safely and now I can't find it. Um, yes, the Shetland wool is all done for this first stage. So I'm now spinning bamboo. How beautiful is that? Yeah. This colour is called Francesca. Uh, it's 100% bamboo fibre, I believe. Just check the label. Uh, yeah, it just says dyed bamboo. Yeah, it's 100 grams again. And it's lovely. Pull a bit out 
over the back here you can see it's so like wispy it's mean it's got lovely long fibers and this has honestly been an absolute delight to spin i have again as you'll have seen if you've been watching my other videos i've had a couple of issues with um breakage but actually a lot less than i've had either with the shetland wool or the corydale and the resulting fiber once it's spun is super strong super strong loving it and it is smooth and slightly silky feeling as you'd expect from bamboo and you know i've got that actually hasn't got much twist to it anymore oh there you go just a bit of a twist still i'm getting there's the odd bit of thick and thin going on but i'm getting a pretty consistent spin out of this much more easily than i have with the wool again so really enjoying spinning this up and i have a feeling there will be lots more bamboo fiber in my future don't know what i'm going to end up doing with it once i've finished spinning it but <laughs> i'm enjoying spinning it <laughs> so that's good what else am i working on oh the project for my brother and the sacred space blanket both of those I've done a little bit of work on but not enough to bother showing you so I'm not going to get them out today hopefully by next time I'll have done a bit more but yeah there's not really any point showing them now so let's just leave those and move on all right this one's a nearly finished project I am making another pouch here's the zippy pouch for inside which is of Timu and I'm doing this one to use up some scrap yarn it's just a little fun one there's no pattern I'm using the moss stitch and I've just taken a bunch of bits of scrap yarn that are all the same um, same type of yarn they're all from the same place I believe it's the Crochet Society Confection DK, most of which is left over from my advent calendar last year. And I've literally just done a few rows of moss stitch in random colours. <laughs> just picked up all. I've got two panels. That was the first one. Here is the second one. You know, they don't match, but they kind of go together. Just scrappy, fun little project that worked up in less than two hours those two panels and now all I need to do is sew them to this crochet around the edge to finish it off and then block it and that's done and that's another thing for a craft market so pleased with that nice quick little project um I don't well no I probably will make more in the same style because they are so quick and easy and especially if I do no when I do because I will um start making my own linings for them that'd be a perfect project to take out and about with me when I've got appointments or long journeys or whatever because it's just it's super simple really super simple so that was a very quick work in progress but there's not a lot else to say about it so there you go um, and the other thing, I think there's just one more thing. Two more things. Okay, so the next thing is currently living in my lovely Edinburgh Castle tote bag that I got when we were on holiday. I am taking part in a, another test project uh, for Shelley of Brambles and Heart on Instagram. She is releasing a new pattern called the Little Aspen Dress, which is a child's dress pattern um, ranging from newborn up to nine to ten years. I have been chosen for the nine to ten years size, so I need to get a move on because it's going to take longer than pretty much anybody else's. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm enjoying it so far. The pattern's really well written. I did have a bit of a wobble last night. I thought the stitch counts were wrong. They weren't. I was wrong. 
<laughs> so, so far the pattern is great. I haven't done a huge amount, but I am making good progress. Me. It's all floppy, it's hard to hold. I think it's not really a good representation at all, but uh, most of the way through the yoke of the dress. Um, I love this detailing. It's got a, um, still I can't tell you too much because it will be a paid pattern and Shelley's working very hard on it. Um, but it's a raglan construction to the yoke and this detail that she has put where you do the increases is just, oh, it's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And it's going to give it a little bit of um, structure as well, which is nice. Uh, you can see here, you might be able to see here, that we are leaving little gaps for buttonholes. So there will, of course, then be buttons to add on the other side. Um, we have until, I think it's the 8th of June to finish it. So this will be a finished project, hopefully, within the next few weeks. Um, <laughs> the uh, pattern is written for a light DK yarn. I seem to have very loose tension compared to other people. <laughs> this is the second time where a pattern has been written for a DK weight and to get the gauge that is needed to make everything the right size, I've ended up using a fingering weight yarn <laughs> and reducing the recommended hook size. <laughs> I think it's written for for the hook size is different for the skirt, but for the body's part, fingering weight with three and a half mil hook. No, DK weight with three and a half mil hook is written for. I'm using fingering weight with a two and a half mil hook. <laughs> and the gauge is right. Madness. Um, this is again Hobby Cotton King's Twirls, now Sultan Deluxe. I've put the label away again. Let's see if I can quickly find the label and tell you the colourway number. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm not. Oh no, never mind. Ignore me. I was going to say something, but I don't need to. There's the label. Colorway 14 for that one. And if I need more, which I might do for the size that I'm doing, I've got another cake of the same yarn in a different colorway, but the outside of the second cake follows on very closely to the centre of this one so I can just carry straight on and it should just blend and look lovely. So it doesn't look like a huge amount yet but I'm having fun working on it. The tester group is lovely, we've had a really nice chat and um, there's loads of us from all over the world. It's really lovely to um, chat with new people who I've not spoken to before. It's my first time testing for Shelley as well. I think I've been following her for a while um, but yeah, my first time testing for her. She's lovely, the group is lovely, I'm having a great time <laughs> and the pattern's working up really nicely. So hopefully next time that I speak to you there'll be lots more progress to show you on that one. Now, this last um, work in progress that I'm going to talk to you about is actually a good bridge between works in progress and my next cast on. I'm calling it a work in progress because I have started planning it oh, and acquisitions actually um, but I haven't technically started it <laughs> because until I think just a few minutes ago well before I started recording the yarn wasn't here I believe it arrived that's what's in one of the things I'm going to show you in acquisitions I haven't even opened the parcel yet Ned has requested a new Pokemon he was very, very happy with the Pikachu plushie that I made him for his birthday. He loves it. I was cuddling it again last night in bed. Um, but we were talking the other day about that and Pokemon in general. And he pointed out that all the soft toys, well, all the merchandise really around Pokemon tends to be centered around a small, group 
of the really well-known Pokemon. There's Pikachu, there's Charmander, there's Squirtle, there's a couple of others. Um, it's completely understandable. You know, I, as an adult, understand companies can't be spending tons of money on manufacturing things for every single Pokemon, and there are hundreds of them, on the off chance that someone might want them, because most people won't. You know, the cost benefit, it, no, it's not there. As an eight-year-old who loves Pokemon, Ned's just really annoyed that he can't get toys. <laughs> My stomach's rumbling, sorry. But he can't get toys um, of the Pokemon he really likes. And so, we were talking about it, and I said, well, okay, which one do you want? <laughs> I'm thinking, oh god, well, what am I letting myself in for? Oh, well, I can try and make it. I can't promise anything. You know, I probably won't be able to find a pattern. I'm going to have to make it up. But I can try. So he has chosen Salazzle, one I'd never heard of before. <laughs> I will pop a little picture up here for you um, so you can see what she looks like. It's a female Pokemon, apparently. Male ones are very rare and possibly called something else. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think I think I can do it. <laughs> Maybe. I've drawn myself a little plan of all the, little, um, all the different pieces that I'm going to need to make. Um, which ones I need to make more than one of. Worked out the colour of the yarn that I need. Um, made note that the limbs and the tail are very thin so I think I'm going to use pipe cleaners to stabilise those, which will also mean they are poseable, which hopefully Ned will appreciate. Wish me luck. <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to start it. I mm, can't start it today, I've got too much else on. Probably next week, in fact. Yeah, Ned's going to have to wait a little bit longer. We'll see. But again, hopefully by the next time I speak to you, there will be at least some progress. Because <laughs> Ned has been asking me every single day whether I started yet. <laughs> like, no, the yard's not here, sorry. Um, so yeah, wish me luck. See if I can figure it out. If I do manage to make it, and the process isn't too traumatic, and I can make sense of what I've done, I may write up a pattern. But that is a very, very tentative maybe. <laughs> I'm not, you know, don't hold me to that. I'm not making any promises. If I do, I'll let you know. Right, so that was both a work in progress and a next cast on. So that brings us nicely on to what my planned next cast ons will be. Salazzle, as I just spoke about. If you've skipped the work in progress chapter, you won't know what that was, what I meant then, so go back and watch it. <laughs> um, I am also going to make some more pouches. I don't know that I'll be able to get another one done in time for the market this weekend, but I might try. Um, but I want to get a few more at least under my belt for future craft markets, as well as bags, but I'm just sticking with pouches for the moment. Um, that moss stitch one that I showed you a minute ago, again, if you haven't watched the works in progress, you're missing out, go back. Um, yeah, the moss stitch one has been so lovely. And like I said, I might make a couple more of those. I'm also planning a granny stitch one, I think. We shall see. Uh, the other thing that I'm planning, I've got an idea in my head for a top for myself. I don't have a pattern yet. I don't have a clear thing. I think I know which yarn I'm going to use. I haven't got it out, so I can't show you at the moment. And I'm not 100% certain anyway. But I've got either a nice deep red 100% cotton or a sparkly black through grey to almost white gradient yarn um, that is... I think almost 100% cotton as well, actually. Obviously it's got a bit of, um, is it polyester, I think, for the sparkle? 
So one of those probably is going to be in terms of shape, very simple. I'm going to make two squares or rectangles probably. Um, join them up the sides. I will um, have a split hem at the bottom so that it falls nicely over my hips. And then I'm thinking a kind of back wingy sleeve because I find that quite fluttering, I hope. Um, I use my bust measurement, so hopefully it'll, there'll be a bit of ease lower down. <laughs> um, but I'm going to use, I don't know the exact pattern yet, but something that is either fillet crochet or like lace effect, um, something like the Lost Souls pattern, which I've used previously for a shawl. Um, if I can find it again, I'll pop a link in the description for you for that particular pattern, just so you know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know for certain that I'm going to use that one, but something of that style. So yeah, that's, that's a plan that I've got. <laughs> um, yeah, we're heading into warmer weather, it's only going to get warmer for the next few months and I really want to have some nice floaty cool tops that I can wear over a vest top of some kind of course it'll have to be um or well, like a camisole or whatever but yeah just something that I feel decent in <laughs> you know I feel like I'm covered up enough but that is nice and cool to wear so that's my plan we'll see what happens I shall update you with any progress as and when there is some right, I'm going to pause for a drink and to adjust my headband because it's hurting and I'll be back in a moment yes I love this headband it's very very pretty but it's a solid like metal one and it's just a tiny bit tight back here it's starting to give me a headache should be all right though just something like that right next chapter on my radar I didn't have anything last time <laughs> I do this time. Um, the wonderful Skittlebow Crochet on Instagram, who has been part of a test group that I was in previously, she's releasing her very first pattern. So cool. It is the Dreamcatcher Granny Square Blanket. It looks beautiful. I'll pop her picture up now. Um, and also, I think it's only yeah it's only a progress picture I don't think she's put one up of the finished project yet that I can see anyway I may just be missing it it is being tested by among others the wonderful Emma of Stitch Up by Emma who I have tested for before with Skittle Bow Crochet so I shall put her pictures up here too for you to see um it looks fab it looks wonderful and as someone who is beginning to dip their toe into designing and you know, I'm hoping to release a couple of patterns maybe later this year watch this space oh I'm so proud so proud of her it you know it looks like an amazing pattern and it's a big deal putting your first one out there so please do go and check it out Again, follow her uh, on Instagram and keep an eye out. I'm not sure. I think the pattern's being released quite soon, but I don't know exactly. So just keep an eye on it, Instagram feed, and you will see it very, very soon, I'm sure. That was nice and quick. That section usually is. And we're now into acquisitions. Again, last time I didn't have anything to show you, did you? Did I? I'm making up for it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got too much, I don't think. What shall I start with? Right. Oh, Nessie. I'm going to start with no address, this lovely box. So, a little while ago, Samantha from Chaos and Kismet here on YouTube said in one of her episodes that she was going to do a bit of a de-stash of her yarn and put some of it up for sale and I immediately commented saying oh when you do let me know 
<laughs> Come on, let me have first dibs. I'm always up for buying unnecessary yarn that I don't need. And I can't afford, but never mind. And here it is. So she has sent me the gorgeous yarn that I chose and paid for. She's put some extra bits in as well, which I will show you in a moment, because the extra bits just completely made my day when this all arrived. Honestly, you should have seen me. I was so happy. <laughs> and I still am. So I've got four skeins of fingering weight yarn. I believe it's mostly superwash merino. The colorway for this one is called Enchanted Garden and it is by Yorkshire Dale Yarn. I think Samantha said that they are not dying anymore, but I might be wrong. I shall perhaps do some research when it comes to editing and let you know in the description. Look at the colours on that though, isn't it beautiful? So that's that one. Ooh, that's the box falling over. Um, this is another one from the same dyers. This is called Azurite Crystal. Again, really, really lovely colours. Don't know what I'm going to do with any of these other than have fun. And this is by the same dyers again, and this one's called Pegasus. It's called Pegasus. He is one of my very favourite mythical creatures. So. That one's lovely. And then the fourth one is... Oh, that label's coming off. Who's this by? Who's this by? Inspirational Yarns by Savour of Salt. And this is again oh, superwash merino, 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. So, really good sock yarn. Super soft. This one doesn't have a colourway name or number, I don't think, written on it. So I don't know what it's called. But look again at those colours. I'm going to have so much fun with this. I don't know what I'm going to make. Probably socks, possibly a shawl, maybe fingerless gloves. We shall see. So that's the yarn she sent me. And then I wasn't expecting these little extra bits at all. It's so cute. She sent me a little alpaca. <laughs> and it is made of alpaca. <laughs> Isn't it just adorable? Yeah, I hope, I hope. Is that focusing? Yes, it is. Look how cute. So he's been living on those shelves behind me since he arrived. I shall pop him back over there in a moment. She also sent me some rather fabulous stickers that are all um, relevant to crochet, knitting, crafting, etc. It's like a bobble hat and some wool. Focus, focus, focus. trying to focus I hope you can see that one um, a sock or a stocking uh, a bag and a basket of yarn balls and now that I have shown these to you I'm gonna pop them on my chest of drawers here with all my other stickers, which will be a fun little thing to do in a minute. And then the final thing that she put in. Oh, you should have seen me, honestly. It's a little pin badge, but it is just perfect. This is like, if I could describe the vision of myself that lives in my head a lot of the time. Just like, look at her. A little witch and the broom is a rose oh, she's just so cute so beautiful so she's gonna have to live on a very special project bag I think or I might I've got pin badges on my project bags but then half the time I never see them I'm thinking I need to find a way to display these 
I don't quite know how. I don't know whether to just crochet like a plain or to get a plain bit of fabric even. Ooh, or one of those boards that you get for displaying earrings. Something like that. And just pop it up on the wall or something. Maybe over here. I've got a blank wall there and I do want to put things up. So maybe I could do that. But yeah. Oh, honestly, I was giddy when I saw that. <laughs> Kelvin was laughing at me because I just, yeah, I went a bit mad. Um, so anyway, that is acquisition number one. Which one shall I go to next? Should we open this parcel from Hobby? Or at least I assume that's where it's from. Oh, make sure I don't show my address. Where's my scissors? There we go. Scissors, scissors, scissors. That's the best way now to open it. This way. Let's do it down here so I don't accidentally show you my address. So I'm terrible for doing that. And much as I'm sure you're lovely, I think Kelvin would be a bit annoyed if I put my home address out on the internet for everyone to see. So I guess not. Just in case. Like I said, I'm sure you're lovely, but you never know, some nefarious person might see this video. Ooh. Oh, oh, no, it's not my yarn from Hobby. Oh, it's even better. Well, it's not even better, because I do need that yarn and I want it. I have ordered for the craft market that I am um, Hosting in June, so this is really rusty. Hold on. There we go, that's better. Got rid of the rustle. Yeah, for the craft market that I'm hosting in June, I've ordered a couple of banners to put outside and they've arrived. That's what was in the parcel. So they're both the same. So I'll just show you one. And they've got eyelets so I can get a bit of string or ribbon or something and tie them up. There's some um, railings out the front and round the side of the venue that I'm using. Oh. oh, they're perfect. Perfect size. Oh, my logo's printed really well. The text is just... Oh, yes, perfect. I can't see now. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. You probably can't hear me either. Yay! Oh, I'm so pleased with those. So pleased with those. I can't remember the name of the company that I ordered them from now, but again, I shall, um, I'll pop it in the description for you, just in case you need anything of this type. They weren't badly priced either, actually. Not badly priced at all. <laughs> oh, I'm really, really happy with those. Yes, I have one at the front and one round the side of the building and then a couple of chalkboards and stuff like that but it's all looking a bit professional oh yay um okay two more acquisitions right another moment of rustle hang on okay i've got rid of the rustly bag and i'm back so almost two years ago Certainly, or possibly more than. It's at least two Christmas. It's at least two Christmases, possibly three. My wonderful mother-in-law bought me a gift voucher for our local yarn shop, which is called Yarn Etc. in Harrogate, Starbeck technically. Um, that's me being a snobby Harrogatonian. It's in Starbeck. <laughs> um, I happen to know the lady who runs it not very well but she goes to the indie business indie business club as well so I know her from there um, and I checked with her a few months ago now that the voucher would still be okay to use she's like, yeah there's no expiration date it's fine just come along whenever you can so the shop is like right next to the hospital which is awesome um, and so, after my pre-op assessment yesterday, I went in, I took my voucher, and I went shopping. 
Uh, it's a lovely shop. The staff, um, the lady I know, the owner, well, she wasn't there. Um, well, at least she wasn't out front. I assume she wasn't in the building. I didn't actually ask. Thought halfway home, oh, I should have asked. Hmm. Um, but the two members of staff that were in were both lovely. We had a nice little chat and then they just left me to it so that I could browse. Um, and I've bought some fun yarn. So I shall show you first. Uh, this is Rikarumi Nilly Nilly, I think. I don't know what the colours are called. But this is number 23. Two, they're super cute little skeins. Got two of those. It's a chenille type yarn. Yeah, two of them. Two of this one, which is number four. And two of this one, which is number 29. No idea what, no, that's not true. I was gonna say I've got no idea what I'm doing with these. It's not strictly true. I've got a couple of ideas for some little things to make, um, again, to take to markets or just stick up on the shop. Fun little things. I don't know for certain that's what I'm gonna do with it, but it's the kind of yarn I'd like to use for those things. So that's good. So there's those ones, and then I have found some really beautiful yarn. This is Lang Yarns Alpaca Socks. Has it got a colourway? Yes, it's got a very long colourway number. 1132.0005, apparently. It doesn't seem to have a name on it, though. This is 70% alpaca. 30% polyamide, so perfect for socks. It's a 100 gram skein, which is apparently 370 meters. So I think that makes it a sport weight. It feels like a little, not sure that quite classes a fingering, but it's close. I think, yeah, somewhere in between a fingering and a DK, which is sport. I just love the colors in this one. Um, makes me think of sunsets. Yeah, that's super pretty. And then the final thing I bought from there is this one, which came untwisted when I got it down off out of the display. So it's a bit of a mess, but it's fine. Um, this is Armonia Super Fine Merino Color. It is oh, it is a sock yarn. I didn't think it was, but it is uh, seventy-five percent superwash merino and 25% nylon and this uh, colour number 2204 again no name as far as I'm aware I just found it really interesting this one some of it is um, plain and some of it's kind of mild which is lovely so again, I don't know specifically what I'm doing with, oh no, it's come and done again, um, with either this or the other sock yarn, but you know, socks are a good option. Oh, what's happening? No, it's okay. Um, socks are obviously a good option. Fingerless gloves, a shawl or two. Um, you yeah, know, something like that. I shall find something for now. And it's just going to go into my stash. Beautiful. Right, final acquisition I've got. I said, didn't I, that I was going to do a giveaway for the podcast birthday. I have here the latest Crochet Society subscription box. This is the outer packaging. I have opened this, I have had a look, I've tried to keep it very neat. And I have decided that it is all lovely, but it doesn't especially appeal to me in terms of colours and the patterns are, again, lovely, but I'm not hugely bothered. Um, so I decided I'm gonna give it away. Yeah, these boxes are worth, I can't remember exactly now. 
I think they retail at about 30 quid, 25, 35, somewhere in that price range. This is box number 48. And I thought I'd open it and show you what's in. <laughs> Try it again to keep it all fairly neat. I don't want to destroy it because it needs to be kept nice for whoever the winner is of the giveaway. All right, Velcro noise. I love that. Such a nice little touch. Okay. That is the booklet, which I'll go through with you in a moment. Uh, designer for this one is Helen Smith, who is... What's her tag? Have we got a tag? Where is she? I'm sure there was a bit of... Um... Oh, it's here, right at the beginning. Helen Smith, who is MCAT Crochet, I believe, on Instagram. I'll go through that properly in a minute. All right, we have got a lovely cloud of fibre fill. Which gives you a little clue as to what some of the projects might be like. We have a ton of yarn. So we have got that box is falling over again. King Cole Big Value DK 50 gram ball in cream, which is 4021. And then same in fuchsia, which is 4034. That's gone a bit funny again. And the same again in yellow, which is 4027. And then we have uh, King Cole again. King Cole Cherish Baby Double D Baby DK in strawberry. This is a 100 gram ball. Uh, shade Tribune 6. It's a self striping super soft really lovely and there are oh there's another one yeah oh and i'm back to the um the big value dk another 50 gram ball in lime which is 4049 so that's 300 grams of yarn in the box you have back oh that's a bit more fiber <laughs> What else have we got? Here? Oh, oh, there's some safety eyes in there. I won't open that up again because I'm ripping the envelope. You, of course, get a wonderful Crochet Society hook designed for the box's theme. This one is a 3.5 mil. I'm putting rainbows on it. I hope you can see. And, of course, a stitch marker. I do love this stitch marker, actually. Um, the silicon stitch markers, which is great, so they're not, um, they're like unbreakable and stuff, and they're always really fun. Nice big lobster clasp. Look at that like, rainbow coloured ball of yarn. Is that showing up? Yes, just about. And then, little goodies, we have got a rather gorgeous metal pin badge. And a little card that says ignore the rain look for the rainbow and on the badge it says making magic happen that's very shiny there we go oh, that lovely it's a nice size as well it's quite big and then I'm not going to undo this there's instructions in the booklet but it is a flat pack yarn bowl it's not just a yarn bowl it's got um, it's a bit there for you can like hang your stitch markers off it, and I believe the other sides. Well, it'll say in here, but um, not running away. Um, each side has, has got a different purpose, so I shall show you when we get to it. Inside the booklet, there's a little chat with the designer with Helen. And a few pictures of her makes and then there is of course the contents page and then the first pattern is the joyful and soft plushy or rainbow plushy which is very cute obviously not going to show you the pattern instructions 
Mm, there we go. So it's the contents of the box. And it says for the yarn bowl, uh, five in one yarn bowl. Oh, I think it's got another page maybe about that. I'm sure it says somewhere what all the sides are for. Uh, there's then a pattern for the spring rainbow cushion. I do quite like that. But not enough to keep the whole box. And, ah, builder box. So we have, these are all the sides and then you can slot them together to make a square yarn ball. Um, so there's a blocking board. There's bits for hanging your stitch markers on and then it's got, um, like stitch term conversions. There's a bit there for hook sizes and the like. There's a um words, 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 words. It works as both a gauge ruler along the bottom and you can check your hook sizes in there. That's the bit that keeps your yarn nice and neat as it's coming out of the bowl if you're using it like that. Yeah, all slots together. And then it's got a bottom as well, of course. All slots together like this. I think that's really cool. A really neat idea. Uh, again, I'm very tempted to keep it just for that, but I'm not going to. Okay, next pattern is the Cuddle and Love Comforter. Nice blanket pattern. It's just look very sweet. I think that uses all the yarn, doesn't it? Possibly, I think that uses all the colours. Um, and it goes well with the rainbow plushie as well, which is cool. And then there's a bit about yarn. Oh, all about King Cole yarns. And the various colours that you get. And then there is one final pattern, which is the Ashbury shawl. Okay. And then at the very back, you always get a page with things that Crochet, words, crochet Society subscribers have made. Uh, you can um, post them on Instagram or Facebook or wherever with a certain hashtag and you'll get um, a chance to get featured. So all of that, the whole box, the yarn, the little goodies, everything, I will be giving that away when it comes to my podcast birthday episode in July. So watch this space. <laughs> Obviously, I will give you more details about how to enter nearer the time. And if any other prizes crop up, then I shall let you know then. And that is all my acquisitions. So I'm just going to pack this away and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. We are nearly done, which is good because it's nearly lunchtime. <laughs> For me, anyway. Obviously, I don't know when you're watching. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you about my plans for the next couple of weeks. Um, I believe I have mentioned before, May is always a really busy month. There's lots of family birthdays going on. And this year, we're actually away for the last week of May as well, because it will be Kelvin's 40th birthday. So yeah, busy, busy. And then there is craft market that I'm at this Saturday in Weatherby. And I'm planning, you know, frantic planning and preparation mode now for the market that I'm organising on the 8th of June here in Harrogate. Details of both of those will be in the description for you. Uh, so I'm trying to keep crafty plans fairly light. Um, Obviously, there's Salazzle to start working on when the yarn arrives. And the other potential next cast-ons to think about and start working on. Um, I must make some more progress on the present for my brother. I must. And what else am I going to do? Yeah, more pouches. I've mentioned that already. Um, oh, what I want to do as well is choose one of my old works in progress that I haven't finished yet and it's just sat on the shelves over there, gathering dust. Choose one of those. In fact, I'll do that in a minute and I'll show you it to either frog or finish. It doesn't matter which, 
but just clear it. I think I'm going to try and do that, assuming I get them finished by the next episode. I'm going to try and do that every episode so that I do actually start working through them because most of them are nearly done. I just need to finish them off. Uh, or the things I'm not going to finish, so I can just frog them and that clears them down nicely and I can repurpose the yarn. So I shall grab something in a moment for that. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? Not a lot, actually. Uh, the next podcast episode will be uploaded on the 24th of May, which is my dad's birthday and my brother-in-law's birthday. <laughs> Because, you know, fate or something. I don't know. Um, so that will be that. Right, hold on and I will fetch that old work in progress. I know which one I want it to be. Okay, here we go. This is what happens when you have three full shelves of works in progress. So this is my lovely Lima bag. I thought it froze then, but I'm okay. My lovely Lima bag, which I got from the Yorkshire Wildlife Park when Ned and I went to, <laughs> went to feed the lemurs. My words <laughs> just went then. Uh, and this is the Festive Furs Jumper Pattern by Manatee Squares. I won't go through all the yarn and everything now, this is just a quick thing. This is pretty much finished, except Ooh, what's happened there? Oh, yeah. I need to sort the collar out because I'm not vastly happy with it. And I need to sort the sleeves out. They're massive, far too long. Don't like them. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the sleeves off, which will mean undoing the sides as well. I'm then going to reseam the sides to get them where I want them to be. Um, split hem got split hem at the moment I'll try and keep that going because if I I'll try it on again obviously but I remember the shape of it actually being quite nice just the sleeves ruined it so yeah seam that back together and then I'm going to start the sleeves again but instead of making them separate and joining them on I'm going to actually start crocheting from the top and work the sleeves from the shoulder down because then I'll be able to check the length as I go check that they're fitting right possibly do some decreases so that they're slimmer rather than you know I quite like a bell sleeve which is kind of what I've got going on big baggy sleeves quite nice um but I might try adding some decreases and getting them to be a bit more fitted so yeah and this is my Christmas jumper that I meant to finish for last Christmas and obviously haven't because I got I got overwhelmed by the fact that it wasn't looking how I wanted it to in the end, which is a shame. So I'm going to finish it, I am. So I will, again, I've got a lot on, I will try and get it done by the next time I speak to you. But at the very least, it's out, I'm going to keep it out, I'm not putting it away again, I'm going to keep it out, I'm going to work on it, <laughs> and I will get this finished. And then I can put it away, ready. For Christmas this year. Right, I'm done. I feel like this might be quite a long one, sorry. <laughs> I hope you like long episodes. I do. I really like watching long podcasts, so I hope I'm not the only one. But yes, that is everything. I hope you've enjoyed it. Same old spiel. If you have liked watching the video and listening to me ramble on, please drop a thumbs up on here. Please do comment, especially if you've got any questions for the Q&A, but generally just say hello. Let me know how your day's going, what you're working on, what you're up to. I love to hear from people. What else do I want you to do? Share it with anyone you think might be interested. Subscribe to my channel, please. <laughs> Go and follow me on Instagram. All of those things take very little time, cost you absolutely nothing, and help me out massively. Help my channel grow, help my audience on Instagram grow, and that's what I want to be doing, I want to be growing. If you would like to support me even more, 
you can head on over to my Ko-fi page and donate to the podcast there. Donate to me, generally. Um, all money that I receive via Ko-fi donations is put into the production of this podcast. Initially, at least, um, you know, for giveaway prizes and postage, any more equipment or software that I want to get hold of, anything like that. If I somehow accumulate too much money, <laughs> which is unlikely, but if I do and I've got money left over, then it will go back into the business. You know, I'll be spending it on yarn and other materials that I need in order to make things to sell them. So it's not just going into my pocket, it is helping my business and you can donate as much or as little as you like. On that note, I do also have my daily crafty chat videos. You can view them for free here on YouTube directly. I've got a playlist uh, for those which I shall either link or I'll put it on the end screen or something. Um, the free version is edited. You don't necessarily get all the content. There are bits I edit out and you get a week's worth at a time. So it's one long video, somewhere between half an hour and an hour of a whole week at once. So the information's a little bit out of date. You can't really interact in the same way as you can if you become a monthly supporter on Ko-fi. Again, very, very cheap. <laughs> you can, at the moment, pay as much or as little as you want to do that, you know, a pound a month. And for that, at the moment, I will be adding more things. I think I said last time, I still need ideas for content to put in the, um, into the membership scheme. Um, but you will get those daily crafty chat videos every single day that I record on. <laughs> Terms and conditions apply. Um, I do record on most days. I think I've skipped one and then once I was late uploading, but I try and record a little video, five, ten minutes every single day, usually in the evening, and get it uploaded and accessible via Kofi within half an hour of me recording it. So depending on where you are in the world, whether you're up still, <laughs> you can either watch it straight away or it'll be there the next day for you. Um, that's enough about that. I don't think I've got any more housekeeping type things to mention. I said when the next episode will be. Market dates will be in the description if you're in the area and can come to those. So I'm just going to say goodbye. <laughs> I hope that you have enjoyed watching. I hope that you're having a good day. Feel free to moan to me if you're having a bad day. I don't mind. <laughs> and I will be back in a couple of weeks. Take care.